Hey, welcome to Church on the Rise. We are so thrilled that you have chosen to tune in to church today. We pray the message will equip you and set you up to win your week. We pray that whatever season of life you're in, that this message will minister straight into where you need God to move the most. Look forward to seeing you after the service. Everyone say, so good. So good. Well, you're ready for the word. Good. Because I'm ready to bring it. So we've been on a journey, Job's journey. And we're reading through the book of Job. And this morning, I just really uh, am praying and believing that people are going to be ministered to, are going to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit, are going to be imparted to, equipped to live your life, even though you may be staring down challenge at the moment. I believe God wants to bring breakthrough. I believe he wants to bring healing. And as I began to, to read through the book of Job, uh, I just wait on what I read, and I know some of it's really heavy going. And you go, well, what, what things can I draw out of this chapter? And sometimes just as I wait on God, he'll, he'll prompt another scripture in me, which will take me to a thought about how God absolutely loves us, how he holds us in the palm of his hand, and how he leads us through a lot of our challenge that we can see him be glorified in our lives. As I began the, the message last week, and we looked at blessed is a man who's poor in spirit, uh, the Beatitudes, the story that G, uh, the message that Jesus preached on the Beatitudes, I actually found a great synergy of the Beatitudes and the life of Job. And so what we're actually going to do over this next uh, little while, few weeks, we're actually going to pull apart the Beatitudes. We started last week, and this week we're going to look at the next one. It says, God blesses those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to your word, we open our hearts. Holy Spirit, we ask for you to minister to us today. Speak to us, comfort us, encourage us all through your word. Lord, we pray that as we look at a sensitive topic, a topic that may be unveiling hurt or pain in our lives, Lord, that you would shine a way through. You would build us and strengthen us to be who you've called us to be according to your glory and your good purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Well, I don't know if you find the synergy, but, but I certainly do. And it's blessing me as I unpack it. And I pray today that it blesses you. We know thus far that Job, Job, Job has had a mountain of trials, a mountain of challenge. And in life, we have trials and tribulations. We have sorrow and suffering. We have problems and pressures, defeats and disappointments. And the challenge for all of us is, how do we move through this? How do we move above the inevitable losses in our life? How do we rise above them? And I hope today that this message will help you to move above them. In Matthew 5 verse 4, it says, God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. So today... We're going to look at how does God comfort us? How does God use our brokenness for his glory? How does God reach us even in the midst of our brokenness? I don't know where you're at and I don't know what you're facing. I don't know if you've come to church all full of joy and life couldn't be any better or if you've actually turned up today churning on the inside. You've got conflict or in your world there's chaos. There's things that aren't quite going according to plan. Maybe you've received a bad health report or you've just lost your job. Maybe you've had a fight with someone close to you and you just know right now I'm broken and I don't know how much more I can take. Well, I want you to take courage today in the power of God's word, in the strength of his Holy Spirit that he can minister to you even in your brokenness. One of the great things is God doesn't expect us to be happy all the time. 
I want to say it again. God doesn't expect us to be happy all the time. And sometimes we feel like we've got to save face or we've got to put a mask on that when we come to church and someone says, hi, how are you? Oh, yeah, good, thanks. But on the inside, we're literally falling apart. And it takes a time to build the relationship and the vulnerability to find who we can talk to about that. And sometimes it's okay to say, you know what, I haven't had the best week, but I'm really glad I'm here. Don't, don't feel like you've got to fake it till you make it. I don't believe God's asking us to do that for one second. But you know, if the body of Christ is like a family, then there's a place for you. And I, I don't want people to stay away from church because you're hurting. I don't want you to stay away from church because you feel like, oh, if I walk through, I'm just going to melt into a thousand pieces. Well, I want to encourage you that God's the person who can put you back together again. God's the person who can actually lead somebody else who may have been through something very similar to what you're facing or going through today. And we're going to unpack what it looks like to find the ministry of God even in the church. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 4, it says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. Rick Warren calls it, that passage of scripture, the series of opposites. Time to dance, a time to to walk, a time to cry, a time to laugh, a time to die, a time to be born. There's a series of events through life And the Bible teaches us that it's actually important for us to learn the grieving process. We're going to look today at how grieving is actually healthy for you. Now, I'm not an expert in terms of dealing with grief. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. But I do know the Word of God has power to help feed those areas in our life where we have lack or we're facing difficult times. There's a time for every activity under heaven. Throughout the Bible, when we look, it says, I'm to mourn my losses, which are the bad things that happen to us. But also, we mourn our disappointment, which are the good things that didn't happen to us. You know, sometimes we have two things actually going on in our world the things we believe in God for, that actually never come to pass. And sometimes we need to mourn those things and grieve them and say, God, what are you saying here? And and come back to him as the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says we're, we're to grieve for friends who don't know Jesus yet, who are spiritually lost. When was the last time you found yourself praying for somebody that they would know the true meaning of salvation and become a disciple of Jesus and just being moved to tears. I've already mentioned this, but grief is essential for our health. It's essential for our emotional health, our spiritual health, our physical health, and our mental health. There's reasons for it. Rick Warren writes this. He says, if you grieve about anything, it means means something. It means that you've loved. It means that you cared. And it means that you're living in reality. Sometimes bad things happen to us and we never talk about it. We, we try and pretend it didn't actually happen. If I don't talk about it, then I can think that, well, it didn't happen. And so I'm not going to mention it any, anymore. And we know that, that old comedy skit that says, don't talk about the war. As if to say, if we don't talk about it, then it didn't happen. But we need to go through the storms and the times of grief. Because as we allow grief into our world and we process it properly, it gets us through the transitions of life. There's no growth in our life without change. We can't grow without change. There's no change without loss. It's kind of like a a transition because you lose some of the old for the new and there's no loss without pain. There's no pain 
without grief. And we will go through some of these seasons in life. When we face grief, I want to talk to you as I've researched this out, that there's two responses that are incredibly unhelpful for your life. Repression. It's when I unconsciously try to block a painful thought out of my mind. I unconsciously try to block the painful thought as though it didn't happen. If I, we've got to remember our mind is like a filing cabinet. And sometimes we want to try and put it right at the back, the back drawer, right at the back, so every time I open my filing cabinet, I can't see that file that's caused grief or pain staring at me. Another way not to handle grief is suppression. It's when I consciously try to block out pain. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not even going to mention it. I'm going to try and do a whole bunch of other things that will try and take all my thought process away from the pain. Both of these are denials. When you go through a tough time, when your heart is hurting, God doesn't want you to suppress it. God doesn't want you to re repress it. He wants you to express it to friends and confess it to him. It's important that you know who you can talk to when you're going through dark days. David talked about this in the Psalms. He says in Psalm 32, 3, when I kept things to myself, I felt weak deep inside me and I moaned all day long. Rick Warren says this, you can either moan or you can mourn. Moaning is when we just try and internalize it. Mourning is when we call out to God in our grief and in our pain. Psalm 39 verse 2 says, David says, I was silent and I held my peace to no avail. My distress only grew worse. Friend, it is important that you find people. We call them a connect group where you actually get to sit and talk and discuss about the big deals that are actually happening in your life. I want God to bless your life. I want God to lead you through all the challenges that you may face in spite of all the bad things that have happened. In order for God to bless you, we find it here in this scripture. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. When we look through the life of Job, we've, we see that he didn't really find a lot of comfort in his friends, even though what some of them were saying was very close to being bang on but had the wrong intent and the wrong motive behind it. It's important that we understand you can't get over grief. You can't go under grief. You can't go around grief. You've got to go through grief. And if we get stuck or we get scared to express that emotion, we actually don't move forward. And in those moments, we need to know that we can call upon the name of the Lord. For he is like a strong tower. The righteous run into and are safe. So how do we get unstuck? The Bible says, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Let's look at four ways in which we can find blessing even in our brokenness. The first way is God draws us close to himself. God draws us close to himself. Psalm 34 verse 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and he saves those whose spirits have been crushed. Sometimes when we're grieving, we can feel like God is a million miles away. But I want to encourage you today, he's never been closer than ever before. If you would call upon his name, he's right there. Not everything you feel is real, and not everything that's real do you feel. There's a bit of a play on words there. And, but when we're experiencing grief, we need to make sure we understand that our emotions are very raw when we go through grief. The Bible says here that God is close to the brokenhearted, which means he's paying attention. He knows what you're going through. He's not aloof. He's not distant. In Hebrews 13 verse 5, 
He says, I will never leave you. If you've got a Bible open, circle that phrase, I will never leave you. That means that even in your worst pain, God will never leave you. He will never abandon you. He'll never strike you off. He'll never say, oh, well, you're not good enough. I'll go find someone who is. No, he wants to minister to you even in your brokenness, even in your most embarrassing disgrace, even in your most massive failure, even in the thing that you're most ashamed of in your life. God will never leave you. I need you to hear that today. 2 Corinthians 6.10 says, Our heart aches, but at the same time, we have the joy of of the Lord. It's like polar opposites. The joy of the Lord's actually found in your salvation. The fact of what Christ did for you on the cross was once and for all. And in through the seasons of life, God never intends for you to handle pain by yourself. The Bible says, draw close to him and he will draw close to you. God knows what you're going through. Jesus himself was a man of sorrows. In Isaiah 53 verse 3, we say, well, how could God know what I'm going through? Well, Jesus himself is recorded in the word of God as a man of sorrows. So when you have sorrow, take courage, my friend. You're not going to come to Jesus and he's going to go, oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. No, he was a man of sorrows. Isaiah said it as a prophecy and we saw that prophecy fulfilled when Christ was crucified. He was acquainted with the, the most bitter of grief and he knew suffering firsthand. Jesus was a man of sorrows and so you know that you can come to him. He was a man who wept. He wasn't void of emotion. In fact, one of the shortest Bible verses in the Bible is Jesus wept. You say, I can't memorize scripture. Memorize that one. Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. 35. Understand that he knows you. He knows your frame. He knows your inner thoughts. He knows what you work, how you work and how you've been put together because he put you together himself. So never be embarrassed to come to God. Never be embarrassed by tears. Allow your emotions to flow. Because all those who mourn shall be comforted. Isaiah 61 verse 2 and 3 says that we've been anointed to be a comfort. We've been anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit to help those who are grieving, those who mourn in Zion, joy and gladness. He's going to give them instead of grief, a song of praise instead of sorrow. Secondly, God gives us a church family for support. How do we get through a brokenness? A church family. God never meant for you to go through life on your own. God doesn't want you to be a lone ranger. You're a part of a family and he intended for you to be a part of his body. There's an old statement that says, when you share a joy, it's doubled, but when you share a sorrow, it's halved. And it's important that, again, you find the network of faith, of people that are going to speak faith into your situation about the load that you're carrying, the load that God never intended you to carry on your own. Healing comes in the church. Healing comes in community. We're better together. So make sure you share the load. In Romans chapter 12, verse 5 and 10 and 15, in these three verses, it says, In Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Be devoted to each other like a loving family. Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. I believe these to be commands. If you call yourself a follower of Jesus, these are not just good suggestions. It's a part of the function of the body of Christ that we are there for one another. Be devoted to one another like a loving family. Sympathize. When you have a victory, don't be jealous of someone else's victory. Celebrate with them. When you have a defeat, don't gloat over somebody else and go, oh, well, I can see where it all went wrong. 
No, stand with them, mourn with them, pray with them, and believe God together to see the situation redeemed and healing come. I, I can't say it any, any more pointed than this. If you're not in a small group, get yourself into a small group. Talk to Mark and Pamela. You say, there's not one that suits me, then start one. Be a leader of one. Talk to them about what it means to be a leader of a, of a small group. Rick Warren says this, that the power of a small group sometimes is the ministry of presence. They didn't have to say anything. They don't have to do anything. Just the fact that they're there is able to get you through. They don't have to give you 10 steps of advice. They don't have to... Uh, come up with the solution or the plan. They just showed up and be there for one another. Sometimes it's our own pride that stops us coming and asking for help. The Bible says God gives us a church family for support. We're to rejoice with those who rejoice, mourn with those who mourn. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Comfort each other and give each other strength. The truth is in life... We either need comfort or you need to be a comforter. Sometimes when you need comfort, you need to know who you can go to that are going to comfort you. And sometimes when you feel like you know, life's going well, then keep your perspective and your vision open to see who you can be a comfort to. Either way, this is a message that you will need to be using at some point in your life. Can I just help you through some of the, you know, Christians are wonderful people, but sometimes we say dumb things. In the, in the guise of we just think we're helping. Can I, can I give you some phrases not to say? Uh, when, when you come to be a comforter, a tour, then um, don't say this phrase, at least. Oh, well, at least you know now. Don't say that phrase. I remember when we, we'd fallen pregnant the first time and uh, baby didn't make it all the way through and uh, I remember someone coming and saying, well, at least now you know you can fall pregnant. And it was a long journey for us. I think it was five years for the first time and then two years after that before we'd actually started to have our family. And sometimes we think we're saying the right thing. Do you know, sometimes the best thing to say is nothing. Maybe the best thing to say is, hey, I'm here for you. If you, if you just need to talk, it's not going to bounce back. It's just, you just need to talk. I'm going to be just two ears and no mouth. I'm just going to listen. And then by the time that person's finished talking, don't offer advice. Just pray for the grace of God over them. Just pray for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because you know the thing I've found in terms of human beings trying to offer comfort is 90% of the time we haven't got a clue what to say. And the other 10% of the time we end up talking more about us than the other person. Oh, well, let me tell you a time when I went through... No. Can I tell you another thing? People that are going through deep grief don't need to read another book. They don't need homework. They don't need a to-do list. Now, if you do this and this and this, and by Wednesday, I'm going to check up and see how you did all that. <laughs> Just listen and pray. And when you're not with that person, keep praying for them. Oh, well, at least. No, there is no at least. The other thing to do with grief, it's incredibly important. Do not rush people. Remember, you don't get over grief. You don't go under grief. You don't go around grief. You go through grief. And everyone's grieving process is different. And we need to respect that. But just be there with them. And if you're going to walk the journey with them, don't take two steps and expect them to catch up. Just if they want to only take one step, then you only take one step. But just walk the journey with them. 
We were recently at the cricket and um, it rained. We actually didn't, we, we didn't go to the cricket, we went to the rain. Uh, and we, we sat in the stands and just watched the rain fall down. And uh, we were all in our ponchos and there's a wonderful picture of us all in our ponchos getting drenched. And so I made the call and said, you know what, they're not actually going to play tonight, so let's just beat the crowd and not get stuck in the crowd trying to navigate back to the car park. And I said, let's, let's all leave and, and we'll head home early. So as we're doing that, I, I just have one speed when I'm walking. It's like 100 miles an hour. It's just when we're shopping, it's like I can't walk slow. I, if, if there's a slow lane, I'm like, need indicators, get around, get back on. And um, I'm walking at a faster pace than Megan. But I thought I was doing a good thing by every five steps turning around going, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you good? And she's miles back there on her own. And I'm thinking, good, you're okay. Because you know how women don't actually say that they're not okay? And so... <laughs> but I found out when we got back to the car she was not okay. <laughs> and that I should have learnt this lesson to walk at their speed. Friend, when people are in grief, it's an, we're not in a hurry to get over it. In fact, if it's deep grief, there'll be a marker in their life and on their calendar <coughs> where they'll find particular days and particular seasons that probably for the next five or ten years difficult to overcome. You talk to anyone that's lost a loved one around a Christmas time or an Easter time or, or pivotal moments uh, around Father's Day if they've lost a dad or Mother's Day if they've lost a mum. And so it's like, oh yeah, well, it's, it's, it's all a happy day. Well, it is, but we're going to walk with people in their grief. And we're not going to fast track it because we're going to allow the ministry of the Holy Spirit to, to feed and nurture and redeem and restore and everyone's got to work it out on their own in the sense of, how am I doing today? You'll have good days and you'll have challenging days. And on your challenging days, make sure you're sending up a flare, you're making a phone call, you're asking for help. What does God use grief to help us do? He helps us to grow through our grief. God uses grief and pain to help us grow, and he does it in three different ways. C.S. Lewis said this, God whispers to us in our pleasure, but he shouts to us in our pain. Pain is God's megaphone. Pain is saying, hello, are you there? You need me. I'm here for you. We rarely change when we see the light. We change when we feel the heat. You know, sometimes you oh, yeah, I just see the light. Oh, yes, I can see it. Yeah, but change actually comes when we're pushed or we're nurtured or we're broken or we have grief in our lives. Proverbs 20, 30 says, sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. When we realize just by doing something, that didn't help us. A second way is God brings good out of bad. Romans 8, 28. We know, not we guess, we know, not we hope, no, we know that in all things, not just some things, not just good things, but also in bad things, we know that in all things, God works the good of those who love him. It's an opportunity to grow our character. Our character's never at where we think it's at, and it's revealed to us when we go through pain and grief, how we respond to it, who we involve in that journey, and how we lean on God to grow us. You may have chronic pain, and that pain may be with you for many, many years. And sometimes you can't control that, but you can decide, is it going to make you bitter or better? Am I going to press into God, or am I going to withdraw from God? Is it going to be a stepping stone or is it going to be a stumbling block? God brings good out of bad. And the third thing he does is prepares us for eternity. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18, these troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory. What troubles? The pain that we go through. As our, develop, uh, our character gets developed, God uses that pain and pressure and problems to lean on him. 
to prepare us for the road ahead, to help us understand that as I go through challenge and lean on God, that he's going to comfort me and bring me through. Because now I have a responsibility to be on the lookout to minister to others in the same way God's comforted me. God's trying to get our attention. He's trying to bring good out of bad and he's trying to prepare our character for heaven. He's giving us an opportunity to grow in the likeness of Christ. The test of your faith, the test of your belief system, the test of your worldview is not how you handle the parties of life. It's actually how you handle the challenges and the failures in life. And fourthly, God uses our pain to help others. Some of you will know a gentleman by the name of Lindsay Flint. Lindsay was an incredible man. He's, a, he's having his party in heaven already. But he went through a cancer trial. And, uh, you know, when he was getting treatment, he determined that when he went to hospital, he wasn't just going to go there for treatment. He was going to go and lead as many people as he could to the Lord. And so while he said, I'm sitting there receiving my, my chemo and, and my treatment, he said it can be incredibly boring. So he started to take his guitar and he started to sing and he started to minister. And, he, and even the nurses were being blessed by what he was doing. And he, and he filled the hospital with praise. So in the midst of his pain, he was able to help others. I want to let you know that God never wastes a hurt. God never wastes a hurt. But as you bring it to him, he'll use it for his glory and see your life lifted up. If you've been through a challenge and you've come through the other side, guess what? You're a candidate to help someone else. It's uncanny to me that the people God leads you to are people that are going through something similar that you've already come through. There'll be a, a synergy in that relationship that God can actually bring comfort through the thing that you've overcome. 2 Corinthians 1.4, God comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comf comfort others with the same comfort we've received from God. I want to just say this phrase again. Right now, you either need help because you're in bad pain or in, in a bad situation or you're able to help someone else. I love what it says in Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison doors to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, the spirit for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I've just underlined uh, some of those words on there. You know, when we're anointed by the Holy Spirit, he anoints us to preach, he anoints us to send, to heal to proclaim, to open the doors, to welcome people in, to comfort, to console, to give, to be called. You have a calling and to be the planting of the Lord. Why? So that he may be glorified. The problem is when we talk too much about our own challenge and problems uh, to people when we're trying to comfort them, it's like we're getting the glory that we got through, but you didn't get through in your own strength. And by listening and becoming an active person, anointed by God through the power of the Holy Spirit, you're able to bring all the glory back to where it needs to go onto God. In Acts 13, 52, it says, the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. Whoever they came upon, there was an anointing upon their life. They were filled with joy and the Holy Ghost. And the people they ministered to received peace and joy. And that's what I want for your life, to be so full of the Holy Spirit that you're anointed to, being, to bring gladness, the gladness of salvation, that it would overflow. 
that the comforter of the Holy Spirit will be able to fill people with the oil of joy, the oil of gladness in Jesus' name. And with the Holy Spirit, we say today, come and minister to the broken. Holy Spirit, fill and meet every heart and fill every need in Jesus' name. If you've recently been through a breaking point or you're feeling broken or there's grief or something that hasn't totally been healed or, or lifted from your life in the way that you're feeling God to lead you through, I just want you to stand in your seat right now because I want to declare this prayer over you. If you're broken, if you feel like there's some grief or some area of life that you're just, you're, you're on the train, you're, you're trying to go through, I want you just to stand in your seat right now. I believe God wants to minister to you. I believe God wants to break the chains that have been holding you back. For some of you, you might have felt stuck in your grief because you haven't known who to talk to or how to even broach the subject. Church, I just want to say to you, if you've got someone standing around you, I want you to go and stand with them. You know, we're a family and we talk about being a comfort. If someone's a little too far away from you, just reach your hand forward to them. I want to declare this prayer over you. I want to declare it over all of you, church. Thank you, Jesus. For those of you who have stood... After I complete this prayer, I just want you, we're going to put a song on and I just want you to come to the front because I want to anoint you with fresh oil. Father God, we pray today and we say thank you for seeing us. Even though in often times we feel like you've forgotten us, Lord, we know that through your word that's not true. You see what breaks our hearts. You see what keeps us up at night when everyone else is sleeping. You see those places in our hearts that are so hurt that we feel helpless and hopeless. God, we know that through your word, the promise of Isaiah 61, that you comfort all who mourn. You provide for those who grieve. You promise to bestow on each of us a crown of beauty instead of ashes. You said that you would give us joy instead of mourning. So today we stand before you as a family together with open hearts and hands before you saying, Father, we're asking you, Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, there are those that are standing who are in physical pain, that are sick, that have disease, or whether it be cancer or other challenges. Lord, that the, we ask for you to be their answer in Jesus' name. They're living in a medical mystery land. But Lord, we're asking for you to heal their pain. Lord, you're the great physician. And we believe that. So we pray for physical healing right now. Lord, we ask for wisdom when we do go to the doctor, that you give the doctors wisdom beyond their own understanding. That you would bring healing in any way that you want into our lives. Lord, today we pray for healing for broken hearts broken relationships, Lord, that you would reconcile relationships. All of those in our lives that are with family, with loved ones, with spouses, with kids, with co-workers, co wherever it may be. And Father, today we ask for courage. Give us the courage of Job when he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away, but I will still bless his name. And in those hard places in our lives, when we feel like giving up, Lord, help us to remember that our hope lies in you and that no matter what happens in our life, we will bless your name. Make us all in our brokenness, Lord, living trophies of your grace, that others would see that we have not given up on you, that our hope is in you and give us the courage to do what's right no matter what and no matter how we feel. Give us the courage to ask for help if we need it even the courage to accept that help. Father, we pray for strength. For some of us, we ask for the strength just to get out of bed, just to make it through another day. The strength we find in you, Lord. But we ask, Lord, 
Give us what we need, moment by moment, day by day. Give us the strength to face our pain, knowing that whatever we're going through, you're going through it with us. We're not alone. No matter the season we're in, we're not alone. So, Father, we pray that you would redeem our pain and bring purpose out of it, that you would use what's happened in our lives for your glory and for your honour. And because of that, that you would draw people to us, people that we can help, people that would be willing to look at us and see Jesus because we have not given up on you and we are blessing your name. Thank you, Lord, that this life is brief and our struggles are only momentary. Thank you, Lord, that you have the hope of eternity. Help all of us, whether we're standing or sitting, to live in the light of eternity with the passion and drive and the hope of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blessing and the gift of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, thanks for being with us today. We pray that the word that God has dropped into your spirit will be a sustaining word, a word that's going to carry you through your week and long into your future. Write down the thoughts and the impressions that God has placed upon your heart and begin to meditate on them throughout the week. If you need help with anything regarding life, revelation, new Christians, whether you need prayer, whether you need help with taking your next step with Jesus, please email us at wecare at cotr.org.au. We'd love to help you. We'd love to partner with you and help you take your next step with Jesus.